Hey everybody, we're going to do something kind of interesting today. It is a carnival wheel built and moving with verse, not what usually people use is a cinematic sequence. So this is in reality truly random. Now when one of these colors gets picked, we get a weapon. So in this case we got one of those. And if we go ahead and punch that again, or spinning the wheel, we're going to see a different, well hopefully a different weapon if it doesn't land on yellow again. <laughs> It's going orange. White? See, you never know. It's on white. So we got a DMR. Anyhow, so let's learn how to do this in UEFN and Verse. Okay, we're inside of UEFN. Uh, as always, code is provided in Patreon. Link is in the description below. But the setup of this is simple. We've got Risky Reels here because it's a pretty cool place to be. We've got a button. The button is going to be used to trigger the wheel to go. We've got a VFX spawner down here because it's what makes the confetti come out. It's pretty cool. We've got our player spawner. So we have a player in the game. And then, of course, the wheel. Now, the wheel is just the wheel here. The arrow is, I made in the modeling of you. UFN here and it's just an arrow, but it kind of gives an indication to the user of where the uh, item is stopping at or when you're going to get a particular thing. In this case, I give six different weapons. Now, if you're wondering how I made this wheel, I made it in Blender. Here inside of Blender, I simply just took a cylinder and split it up and then I just put different colors on it. This isn't a Blender tutorial though, so I'm not going to go over how I made this very simple wheel. But the most important thing is that when you're making it, your center point is quite literally on the center of the X axis. Okay, not the Y and not the Z. We want to put it on the X axis. That's when it comes in just right into UEFN. Okay, so back inside of UEFN, when I bring in my mesh, it brings it in as a static mesh. We can't do anything with a static mesh. We actually have to turn it into a blueprint. So inside of here, I've got my carnival wheel blueprint. Very, very simple to do this. Just right click, hit the blueprint class, and then building prop, and then call it whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, something understandable, obviously. Then inside of here, when you open up your blueprint, double click it, you can go to the, the static mesh right here. And then inside of here, we'll click and go carnival wheel, because that's what I called it. Now, it doesn't matter what it looks like inside of here. It's half in the ground. That's because its rotation point or its origin point is right in the center. So it lands right inside of the ground. I'm just going to go compile, save and close. And now we have two carnival wheels down here at the bottom. And we bring this in and you can put it anywhere you want. And this is a way we're going to be able to to control it with verse. All of that out of the way, we've got our scene set up, we've got our button, we've got our carnival wheel, we've got some arrow to just show things, we've got our spawner, we've got our VFX, which you don't need, but I put in because I like them a lot. Let's take a look at the verse so we can see how to build this and make it go. Okay, so inside of verse, it's actually relatively simple to do this. But I'm going to go over all of it just so you know what I've done and the steps I've taken and how I've thought about it. So the first thing we need to do is make editables. Editables are what make our props in our game accessible to verse. And my verse device is just over here on the other side of Risky. It's in the ground here. We'll just raise it up because it did the landscape. I didn't bring it up. Doesn't matter. This verse device is our game manager. These are all of our item granters. So we're going to take a look at those in verse in just a second. Each one has a different weapon in it. So when we do an editable in our game device, we can see on the right hand side in the details panel how we set those items up. So the carnival wheel here, I set it up to be the carnival wheel in the game. Anyhow, hopefully you guys all understand that stuff. Let's keep going. So the editable for the carnival wheel is a creative prop, which means it's a blueprint essentially. The editable for the spin button, the button that makes the thing go, is a button device. We've got all of our item granters here, nothing special going on. And then I've got my VFX spawner, which I like to use in a lot of my games because I think they're neat. Okay, so when we have our device on the stage in the scene, on begin is going to run. It's the first thing that's going to run. We want to set up all of our subscriptions and variables and all kinds of things inside of on begin. And in this case, we only have a button. So we're going to set up the interactive with event event, subscribe to that and call on spin button click, which is a function that lives right here. So the button when clicked uh, passes in the agent and the agent is the player. So whoever click the button and we want to know if we're doing any rotations right now because we don't want somebody clicking the button and then having it restart and redo a thing. So we want to check and make sure that we are not spinning right now. So we do an if statement of is rotating. If it's false, then go ahead and spawn our make wheel spin. So our logica is right here for is rotating. 
by default, it is false. Okay, so spawning is where we're going to make a function run in sort of an asynchronous thread. That means that we can do things that take time that's not going to hold up the rest of the game. So we call make wheel spin. We're going to pass in the agent because we want to know who the agent is because when the wheel stops, we want to be able to give them something. Make wheel spin takes the agent and it suspends. So that means it's going to pause the thread pause the cycle that's going on for this function. We're not passing anything back, so we just uh, ret we'd have a return of void equals. And we immediately set up two important variables. One is the maximum rotation that this thing is going to do. So I've set it to be 150. We are rotating, so we'll put set is rotating equals true. Then we're going to loop our carnival wheel move to. Now, move to is kind of interesting. Sometimes it can be a little janky, so you have to be cautious of how you use it, but it seems to work pretty good here. And it's pretty much our only option outside of a cinematic sequence, which I think, think is very good because it's not properly random. And we also can't use the animation controller. It's just too weird. It's too, you, you wouldn't be able to, you'd have, you'd have a lot of effort to try to make it truly random, which this one is. We use move to because that makes props move, blueprints in our scene. So our carnival wheel, we're going to get the transform, which means we get the translation, which is this position, and the rotation. We pass in the translation because we don't want to move it. We're going to get the rotation, and then we're going to apply roll to it. So that's the axis that we want it to turn on. There's yaw, pitch, and roll. We want to apply roll. So we're going to go degrees to radians, and we're going to rotate it a particular amount of degrees, which was set up here. And then we're just going to take a second to do that. So for one second, rotate 150. And then we're going to make a new rotate degrees amount. And we do this by taking a random number, which is an int, by the way, between 5 and 25. You can do anything you want here. I chose 5 and 25, but you could do less or more or some smaller, bigger difference. And then we're going to make a random float by multiplying the int by 1.0, because we need floats four times inside of the move to function. OK, and then we set the rotate degrees, which is the degrees that this thing rolls at, which is right here in degrees to radians, rotate degrees. Now we minus off whatever this came up with, somewhere between 5.0 and 25.0. It's going to take that amount off. Then from that, if it happens to go below zero, then we're going to stop everything because we can't we don't want to rotate backwards. So what we'll do is we'll spawn start confetti, which is the VFX, which is down here where we enable it, sleep for five seconds and then disable it so it doesn't go forever. And then we're going to set rotating as false because we're not rotating anymore. We're going to grab the wheel rotation, the yaw, pitch, roll, degrees. And we're going to have the roll, which is a float and uh, which is in the wheel rotation too, because yaw, pitch, roll means that yaw is the first one in this array of floats. Uh, pitch is a second and roll is a third. So arrays always start at zero. So zero, one, two. So two is going to be the roll. And then we'll print the roll just because it's kind of, you got to be kind of curious about it. Now, the interesting thing about this is that roll only goes from zero to 180 and then it goes from minus zero to minus 180. So you have to do some weird stuff in here. And there's probably other ways to do this, but I think this is the easiest way to do it. So essentially, I just try to figure out the quarters that that it stopped at. So from zero to 44.9, 45 to 89.9, blah, blah, blah. And then zero to minus 44.9. If it's between that, then do a thing. And each one of these item granters gets set off. And that's it. You're done. It's that easy. You uh, don't have to do a lot to make this thing go. It's really about setting through the move to a particular amount of roll to do for a particular amount of time. And that amount of roll that it does is less and less each time, which makes it slow down quite nicely. So hopefully that has been helpful. Again, all code is in Patreon. So for everybody who's a member there, which there have been quite a few new people, thanks for joining. It's all in there. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next one.